Good afternoon. My name is Donna Thiesel, and I'm your host of Donna's Edge Talk Show, where truth matters. You can find us on the radio, icradio.media. You can also find us on television channel 182 on Charter Communications and Abundant Television, which is found on Roku, Apple TV, and Amazon Fire. And don't forget the podcast, thenewscasters.com. If you have any ideas for shows or you'd like me to do a little research for you, I love doing research. You can send in email to Donna at Donna's edge.com. That's Donna at Donna's edge.com. Again, thank you so much for watching. We're going to be talking about biscuits today. It's all about biscuits. I'm going to show you what you can do to save time, ready for the holidays or the rest of the year. You can do this. Go ahead and bake, make up some biscuits. Okay, make up the dough and I'm going to show you how you can put it on a pan Put it in your freezer and then take those out maybe the night before or the day before and have some biscuits in the morning. Save a lot of money. We're all about saving pennies here. Buying things is just so much more expensive than it used to be. So if you're going ahead and do this, let me tell you the price. It's going to be less than $2 to do this for a big bag of biscuits. Now, if you buy those in the grocery store right now, they're going to be somewhere between $12 and $15. Man, they went up massive. Maybe even more than that. I'm just saying what a couple of months what the price was. Save some money, and I'm going to show you how to do that. But before we, before we do this, I'm going to give you some ideas on some flavors for biscuits and I'll there's 25 of these I hope we can get to all of them but we'll just get to a few of them and then we'll go into how to make these biscuits okay cheddar biscuits are super good I mean you buy them in restaurants that way make your own uh, whatever amount you want to of cheese and I just flood mine with cheese but cheddar cheese is best so go ahead and put that in there and maybe a little bit of basil or maybe a little bit of oregano in there as well and it tastes so good so you can go ahead and put that into the original make of your biscuits another good idea is fluffy sour cream biscuits and this is instead of using milk or so much milk and uh, you can also add mayonnaise but instead of milk and butter Add a little bit of sour cream. It's going to give you a little bit of a tangy-like taste in your biscuits. Taste really good. Another one that I love to do is the garlic herb butter drop biscuits. Using this same recipe right here, you're just going to add just a bit of Italian seasonings, which would consist of parsley, parsley and powdered garlic. And man, it makes them so good and so tasty. These biscuits are really good with fish with everything but really good with fish okay southern biscuits with mayonnaise okay I mentioned that so what you can do and I'm going to read this one to you so to this recipe I'm about to give you you can do self-rising flour mayonnaise vegetable oil and buttermilk and bake these things up now in a cast iron skillet they're going to be really golden brown and this is what you can do go on ahead and put um, some butter flavored Crisco okay put that in on sides and the bottom of the cast iron skillet. Put it in the oven and preheat it to about 350 degrees and let it sit in there for about three, four minutes. Take it out, put those biscuits in it. The best biscuits ever. Okay, so they're super good. Um, maple bacon biscuits are really good too. Just a little sweet, a little bit savory. So this flavored but, um, biscuit recipe is just what you need for breakfast or, or brunch. So what you can do is double the recipe and put a little bit of jam in it as well. So it's super good. Iced cinnamon raisin biscuits are good. All you got to do is just add a little bit of cinnamon and add some raisins to it. You got cinnamon biscuits. Um, and here's a savory tomato biscuit. I've never tried this, but I bet it would be good, especially with maybe something like um, spaghetti uh, or something like that. Anything with a spaghetti sauce to it. Um, so swapping in tomato juice for milk creates these beautiful biscuits to the got a little bit of a pink tint to them. So if for an extra kick, use spicy tomato juice. Cheddar Bay biscuits are super good. They're, they're kind of like a famous seafood restaurant. So they're cheese and they're herb filled biscuits and they are super good you can um, add them to anything it, again we're looking at fish recipes basically anything you got there one more lime biscuits and then we'll go into the video um, fresh lime juice and zest make these tender biscuits a bite of citrusy like flavor and they taste super good and they're really good 
with chili. Okay, let's go ahead and go into a, the first video, and we'll be right back in just a few minutes. Okay, we're back. So I just wanted to get with you while we're waiting on the cake to bake. I'm going to show you how to make some really easy biscuits. Now, this is so simple. I mean, anybody can do this. And bis Phil gets a biscuit every single morning. So what I'll do, I'll freeze all these biscuits. I'm going to be using um, six cups of flour, and that's a plain flour. And then I'm going to use one tablespoon of baking powder, half teaspoon of salt, and I'll be using a little yeast. But this is why Phil gets a biscuit every morning. I freeze these. I put them in a bag, a good bag to go into the freezer, by the way. Let all the air out I possibly can. I'll take a biscuit and just put it in one of these little containers right here. And he gets a baked biscuit every single morning for breakfast. Either with his oatmeal or if he wants grits, whatever he wants, he gets a biscuit. It's not because I'm like the best wife in the world. I look for shortcuts. So I'm going to show you some shortcuts. Okay, now the first thing I want to do is go ahead and stabilize some yeast. Okay, so I'll open that up. Now I've added about a tablespoon of sugar to this. This is going to help the yeast is going to eat into this sugar right here, and you're going to get a better, much, much better bread. Okay, so it's kind of like, it'll taste almost like a yeast roll. Now I'm going to go to the sink right here, and I'm going to put a little bit of hot water, okay? So I'll be right back. Okay. That doesn't have to be boiling, okay? <laughs> boiling water. Just make sure that it's heated really well. This is one of my favorite little cups right here. I love this cup. Okay, now what I want this is going to kind of bubble up just a little bit. See how that yeast looks? It's not ready yet. I want it to bubble up. I'm not going to use a mixer, nothing like that. It's going to be a real easy, simple process. Now, there are a few things that make this easy. One of those is I, I use the butter-flavored Crisco. I really do like that. And so I like to keep it in the refrigerator because what's going to happen when I add that to the flour and to the milk mixture, what this is going to do is give it these little buttery bits that are in the biscuits. And that's what everybody likes about those Hardy's biscuits, remember. Okay, so I've already put, and I've got a little bit of flour right here in a bowl. I'll be using that, and you'll see why in just a minute. So I have six cups of plain flour here. And I really do like using the gold metal brand. It's a real good one. But now, if you're going to use self-rising flour you don't have to add anything to it only the yeast mixture okay so what I'm going to do to this is add per every two cups I'm going to add one half tablespoon of baking soda all right so that means I'm going to add really a, ta a, ta a teaspoon I'm sorry a teaspoon and a half That's my baking soda. All right, now the salt, I'm gonna add that. And I really do like the coarse sea salt. I put that in almost everything I, I bake um, in, in everything I cook. I just really like the texture of it. Now what I'm going to do, now this is per six cups, okay? Now per two cups would be one half teaspoon of salt. So I'm gonna use a teaspoon and a half because I've got six cups in here. You don't have to be a mathematician to do this. Okay, so one, two, three, because I'm using the measurement of a half teaspoon. All right, so there we go. We got that done. I'm just going to mix this with my hands. Nothing wrong in the world with that. Now, I'm going to add a little bit over... I'm going to do about, and I know it's not following any kind of a recipe at all, but this works. So I just dip my hands in three times into this Crisco butter right here. All right, so I'm adding three, and again, it's cold. It's been chilled in the refrigerator, and it's going to leave these little beads in here, which is going to be absolutely awesome. Did you know that your hands, make sure your fingernails and everything are clean, okay? But make sure 
And dig in under there with a fingernail file or something to make sure you don't have anything in, in your fingernails. Um, so, look at this. Okay, now I'm not going to go just crazy with this. Alright, so here we go. I'm mixing it up. And I want to keep little beads of this shortening. Again, it's the you can use regular shortening, you can use lard, you can use whatever you want to use in this. It doesn't matter. Um, but Phil just seems to like the biscuits better this way. All right, now I am to the point of putting buttermilk. Remember the buttermilk we made with the real lemon juice? I used about three tablespoons of this, and then I filled the rest of it up with just regular uh, milk, and it turned into buttermilk. Look at that. See how thick that buttermilk is? That's what makes it. Okay, now remember the mixture we had just a few minutes ago, and this is um, using my yeast right here, a tablespoon of the yeast, and then I put about a tablespoon of sugar in it. See how that kind of is bubbling up? It's ready. I mean, it doesn't take long at all, but now you've got to use warm water, not boiling and, uh, and not cold water. It just won't work. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and pour this in here. There we go. That's adding a little bit more wet to it. Look at that cut. I just think it's pretty. I love it. I love baking with it. Okay, now, I think it's going to be pretty dry, so I'm going to have to add some more milk. Okay. All right. Now, you don't want to mix, a, mix it real heavy, but you want to mix it enough. So I'm adding some more milk, and you'll see what I'm talking about with the consistency. I'm not using a recipe, and one reason I'm not is because you guys live in different areas of the country. If you live in different areas of the country, the altitude's going to be different. If you live in a mountainous area, you probably won't have to use as much milk or as much liquid. You can actually, these biscuits turn out good if you wanted to use just plain old water in them. You can do that as well. You don't have to have milk. All right. Uh, but if you live in a flat area, like where Phil used to live in Houston, Texas, you wouldn't use as much. There are no trees there. <laughs> we almost moved there when we got married. Nice area. Um, Phil lived in Spring, Texas, which is a suburb of Houston. By the way, a lot of folks have asked me about milk from the Dollar Tree. This is from the Dollar Tree. It costs a dollar and a quarter. It's good to have it. A lot of you want to stash things and put them up just in case, you know, supply demand. You know, something happens there like it did during COVID. And I just like to keep some of it on hand. All right, now I want it. I'm going to dig down in here, down in the bottom, because I, I want all of that covered, okay? I'm not sure how much milk I added. I don't know. Probably under two cups, I would say. But I want to show you the consistency. We talked about that with the cake just a few minutes ago. This is the consistency you want. Okay? That is the correct consistency. Alright, so what I'm going to do is finish up. I've got to wash my hands. And I'll be right back in just a few minutes and we'll finish up with the biscuits. We're back. So that was the first part of it. Let's go into a commercial break. We're going to be right Jeff back. McCurdy of the McCurdy Law Firm has been a public service of this area for over 10 years. McCurdy, a member of the Henniger City Council, serves as prosecutor for the town of Sylvania and was named public defender for the city of Rainsville. The McCurdy Law Firm is located at 17326 Alabama Highway 75 in Henniger to better represent his Jackson and DeKalb County clients. If you need to be represented by a true public servant with proven success, call Jeff at 256-996-8701 or send a private email to McCurdyLawFirm at gmail.com. No representation is made that the legal services performed is greater than the legal services performed by other lawyers. At Liberty Bank, we're all about community. Whether it's to help with a charity fundraiser or help families in need. Toys at Christmas or a local football team, we're here for you. You see, we realize the importance of family. Sometimes it's to build a new home or necessary home repairs. We're here for you. 
If you like the feel of a small town bank with all the conveniences of a big city bank, we're here to serve you. You will find us at any of our convenient locations in DeKalb, Marshall, Etowah, and Blount Counties in North Alabama. You can call and speak with any of our friendly staff at 256-659-2175 or check us out on the web at libertybankal.com. And thank you for your support of our community. Member FDIC Equal Housing Lender. Mexican restaurant located in Henniger, Alabama and voted Best Mexican Restaurant of DeKalb County, Alabama 2020, we're here to serve you with authentic Mexican cuisine. Order easily online by going to limonesmex.com or call 256-657-3999 to place your order. We're open Sunday through Thursday 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. and Friday and Saturday 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. Whether you're celebrating a cozy date night for two or a celebration for a crowd, at Le Mans, you'll love our atmosphere and friendly servers. Thank you for dining with Le Mans Mexican Restaurant. My towels solved a problem that we've all had with towels. You go into the stores and they feel lotiony and soft, but then you get them home and they wouldn't dry you. That's why I made my towels. They actually work, they're soft, and they absorb. And now I'm excited to announce two brand new lines of my towels. What makes them the best towels ever is they're now made with 100% long staple Shapir cotton. This is a combed ring spun cotton that makes my towels even softer and more absorbent than ever. And now you get a six piece set for an amazing introductory sale price as low as $29.98. So go to mypillow.com or call the number on your screen. Use your promo code to get my towels for only $29.98. Or you can get my designer premium line for just $20 more. Either way, you save 50% now on all my towels. They actually work. What a concept. This offer won't last long, so please order now. MyPillow.com Are you ready? We all wonder what tomorrow will bring, but the future lays itself at the feet of the prepared and surrenders to the will of the persistent. It's not easy, but today shapes you so you can shape tomorrow. With Northeast Alabama Community College, when the future asks if you're ready, you can answer. Yes. Begin your future at Northeast Alabama Community College. Okay, we're right back in. We're talking about biscuits, all about biscuits today, and some of the different flavors that you can add. So you'll have your ordinary biscuit. So let's talk about this one. A lot of you have air fryers. So this is an air fryer zesty cheddar biscuit. So let's see what's in it. Okay, so equal parts cheesy and spicy. These bold flavored biscuits are baked until they're golden brown in the air fryer. Let's try that. The dough is infused with green chilies, taco seasonings, and cheddar for a south of the border flavor. Herb buttermilk biscuits. These biscuits don't mess around when it comes to their herbaceous flavor. These, this recipe includes thyme, savory, parsley, and and uh, basil and also honey butter biscuits and then we'll get right into the next uh, video somewhere between a biscuit and a cinnamon roll is what this one is these are tender pastries and they work both as a bread side or dessert so the dough is spread with rich honey butter then it's rolled up and sliced before baking let's go into the next video okay we are back so i uh, washed my hands off got all of the about to get them dirty again but anyway i went on ahead and washed my hands got all the dough and everything off and so we're baking biscuits and so i do not butter this pan because this is my big pizza pan and i'll be putting this in the freezer and if i were to butter this when i'm ready to take these things out of the bag and i put them in the freezer after i take them out they're not going to come out of here easy so let's go ahead and get started. 
what we're going to do is shape these, okay? Because what you want, you want happy husband, happy spouse, happy kids. You want everybody happy. If they'll eat a biscuit every morning, it's going to stick to their ribs, okay? So this is something you could do for the whole family. Set them out. This was frozen this morning. I went on ahead and took it out to get ready for tomorrow for Phil's breakfast in the morning. So, um, you know, if you've got a family of four, get four biscuits out and um, put those in the refrigerator, and then you'll bake them just like you would normally, okay? It's just like buying biscuits in the grocery store, but you're not paying near as much. Um, you buy your flour, even if you're paying $4 for five pounds of flour, look how many biscuits that's gonna make. So this recipe was for six cups of flour, and again, I used the plain flour, and for a total of the six cups, um, because I'm going to put a lot of them in the freezer. I guess I'm that lazy. I don't know. But anyway, um, I used a um, full teaspoon for each two cups. So that was three teaspoons of yeast. And I got that to mix with the sugar. So that bubbled up. And then I used one and a half tablespoons of baking powder and one and a half teaspoons of salt to this recipe. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So I have this little bowl of flour right here, and um, you can see this is how much biscuit we have right here. There's a lot of it. And so let's go ahead and get this thing ready. And but you can you can do it the fancy way and roll it out and all that kind of stuff. But this to me this is the quickest way. All I want is a ball, okay? Don't flatten it, okay? Just let it be a ball. You'll be able to fit more into the pan is the reason I do that. And then in the morning, when you go on ahead and put those things in the oven, you can flatten it. Do it then. So, little things. Uh, it's the neat thing about being 64 years old. You learn a lot of things over the years. I like to let that be my claim to fame. Okay, so I'll turn that around so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to just make a little, make it round, okay? All the way around first, and then I'll go in the middle with what I've got left over. Okay, again, I'm just, you know, just putting it out with my finger there. Putting it in the pan. Okay, and um, again, you know, time of the year and the temperature and where you live affects the ingredients. You know, I didn't use a uh, measurement for the milk, uh, the buttermilk. And um, I'm guessing I probably put maybe a little bit over two cups of milk. But now you adjust it to where you live, okay? Now remember, the yeast is going to help. It'll taste almost like a yeast roll. Alright, so you'll watch me going around the pan. And see, this is all I'm doing. Don't make life complicated. You don't have to. Again, I'm not flattening it down in the reason I'm doing that. You see, some biscuits are big, some are little. Um, if you got little kids, you can make a little baby biscuit for them. Kids love that. They're more likely to eat it if you name it something. I don't know my kids that. I was the same way when I was a kid, too. All right. Now, again, what I've got here in this bowl right here is helping me so it's not sticky. See, that way I can touch it. It doesn't get all over my hands like it did when I was mixing those. All right. I mean, this is a quick thing, and if I'm not sitting here talking to you, I'd have, I would have already had these put in the freezer. But I wanted to spend just a few minutes with you and just kind of, you know, tell you what you can do. All right. Move those there. And again, you can use shortening, um, just regular shortening. You can use lard. I'll have to, have to tell you, there's hardly anything better than lard biscuits. I think they're flakier. And lard, but you know, there was this time in life that we're talking about how terrible lard was. Lard was killing people. Well, actually, lard is better for you than shortening if you really want to know about it. Okay, we're almost done. See, it doesn't take long. This is going to do, and I'll count the biscuits in just a few minutes, but this is going to be almost a month's worth of biscuits, unless somebody comes over to the house, then I'll get some of them out of the freezer. Okay, there we go. I'm putting him right there. All right, I got just a few more. Sometimes you have them on top of each other, but that's fine. Um, I will leave these in the freezer for, um, 
you can leave them up to 24 hours if you want to. I've had to do that. Before. You know, like with a lot of tapings and things going on, just didn't have time. Um, and they'll be fine. They're not going to have freezer burn. Now, if you leave them in there a week, of course, it's going to be freezer burn. But just for 24 hours or so, it's not going to hurt a thing. And um, you want them hard enough. You want them completely frozen. So when you put them in your bags, they're not going to stick together. Yeah, I did this a long time ago when I was a lot younger, and I didn't put them in the freezer. I just put them in a bag. Well, every night before I would put it in the freezer or put it in the refrigerator for the next morning, you know what I was doing? I was spending a whole lot of time with a butcher knife trying to get them apart of each other. So, all right, I'll make two out of this one. So let's put him there. And this one right here can just be left right there. Okay, so we have a whole bunch of biscuits there. It's going to last just about a month, or depending on if the company comes over. All right, so I'm going to wipe my fingers off here just a little bit, and um, we'll be back in just a few minutes, or a few hours, so you can see what they look like when I put them in the bag. Okay, so remember those yummy biscuits we made earlier this morning? They're frozen. And this is what we're going to do. If you didn't freeze these biscuits and you went on ahead and put them in a bag like this, they're going to just grow together. Then you're going to wind up with a butcher knife trying to get those things apart. Well, this is the easy thing to do. Okay, now there has to be a good freezer bag. So all I'm going to do, and it doesn't matter if I throw them in here, if I toss them, whatever I do, there go the biscuits. Okay, so they're going in the bag right now. All right. You may have to use a spoon just to kind of get everything apart, just a little bit. But now they need to be completely frozen, okay? And I did loosen them around just a little bit with this spoon, so here we go. Loosen up some more. And then all you've got to do the night before you go to bed, all you're going to have to do is just take out a biscuit and uh, put it in a bowl, put a top on it. In the morning, all you've got to do is going ahead and put that biscuit in the oven and bake it. You know what? This probably cost less than a dollar. I'm, I'm sure it did. It cost less than a dollar for all these biscuits. Now I can buy them already frozen. I'm going to pay a low lot more than a buck. I tell you that. Prices really went up. Now, this is what I like to do. Get as much of the air out as I can. I'm going to go on ahead. And again, now use the good freezer bags. Don't use cheap stuff on this. I'm going to press and get a little more air out of it. I can actually feel the air coming out right here. Okay, so I'll do that. Let's do just a little bit more. I want this almost vacuum sealed because the enemy of anything you put in the freezer is air. Okay, that's all there is to it. Now in the morning, all I've got to do is just take this out. Pretend this is my pan. I've put a little butter or some kind of oil on top of it. And I'll just get a biscuit out. And there you go. I'm baking a biscuit. I took a little bit of work, and I'm saying just minimal work. Just a little bit of work to do to get all this stuff ready. This is going to last me about a month. Unless we have a bunch of company over and I want to use some of these biscuits. Again, I'm pressing. Every time you get a biscuit out, you want to press that air out as much as possible. See, I can feel it right here. Just a little bit more right there. I'm going to press. Okay. I put these things in the freezer, and I'm ready for another time. Thank you for watching. Thank you so much for watching Donna's Edge. See you next time around. Hope you had a good time.